Okay, shalom everyone and welcome to Bits of Torah Truths. This week's uh, Torah portion is Parashat Behukoti and it's titled Walking in the Testimonies. And I'll post the link here. You can go to, and I always recommend going to the PDF file instead of just the web page because um, the PDF file is better formatting and uh, there are certain things I can't do on the web page that may be in the um, the PDF file, so I recommend going there. And then I got to bring it up on my my tablet. Give me a moment here. Give me a second. Shoot, I should have done this first. Okay. Okay, so um, Prashat Behukoti, Walking in the Testimonies. And so this week's reading from the portion, and this week's portion covers Leviticus chapter 26 through 27, and it's the last portion in... Yeah, it's the last portion in the... Um, in the in the book of Leviticus and you know I like that everyone goes to the web page first because it ups my traffic statistics and, um, and then click on the PDF from there instead of giving a direct link to the PDF just uh, FYI but um, so this is the last portion in the book of Leviticus and it covers Leviticus 26 through 27 and the Parsha begins by God stating to keep his meats vote his commandments so that he so that the rains will come and the land will produce its fruit in its season and that's found in Leviticus chapter 26 verses 3 through 5 walking in God's ways will bring peace in the land remove the harmful beasts and no sword will pass through the land the scriptures say that when we obey God's commands our enemies will run and fall before us and it says in Leviticus 26, verses 10, 7 through 8, But you will chase your enemies. They will fall before you by the sword. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand, and your enemies will fall before you by the sword. And the Lord will make his dwelling among us. On the other hand, uh, if we fail to keep his commandments and reject his statutes, the Lord will set his face against us so that we will fall before our enemies and will flee even when no one is pursuing us. Do you think this, these scriptures are valid for us today? What do you think? You know, I think they're very valid. I have a friend that was um, involved in illegal activity years, many, many years ago. And I remember that, um, I don't go into details or anything or, or who it was or anything, but um, he felt the police were on to him. And he was telling me about this. He felt the police were on to him. And uh, he got rid of all of his um, drugs and stuff. And there was nobody chasing him actually, in actuality. And so uh, whenever I read this verse, I think back on, on my friend and... I think, man, these verses, these, this, this is, these, this happens today. This is exactly what happens to us today. That um, if we don't obey His commands, if we aren't living right before God, that uh, we will fall before our enemies and we will flee even when no one is pursuing us. Now, uh, these things, these things, according to the the Torah portion, will be brought upon the people. So they turn; they are to turn from their wicked ways and obey God, and that's exactly what my friend of mine did. Was that uh, he repented and he turned from those ways, and he he since stopped doing that stuff. But um, the the and that's exactly a fulfillment of these scriptures here. And and so I do believe that that the the Torah is valid for us today, and um, even in in these details here, and the scriptures say that if the people continue to reject the Lord, that He will cause the plague to strike them seven times because of their sins and if they continue to in their hostility against the Lord it's repeated I will strike you also I seven times because of your sins and continuing in the sin of hostility against the Lord results in the increase 
in punishment. And so the people will consume, I mean, the, the punishment will be so increased to such a significant state that the people will consume the flesh of their own children. And so they're, they're, they'll be starving. And the Lord will lay waste to their cities. This says in, um, that was verse 29 of chapter 26. And verse 31, the Lord will lay waste to the cities. And then he will scatter the people to the nations, verse 33. And when though these things happen, then the Lord will, in, or sorry, the land will enjoy its Shabbats, its Sabbaths. The people who remain in the land will have great weakness of heart, and they will stumble and um, flee, even though nobody is pursuing them and their enemies will consume them. However, if the people repent, the Lord will remember his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so, again, I ask them this question, do you think these things apply to us today? And I certainly do. Now, the scripture verses we're looking at is from Leviticus chapter 26, verses 1 through 5. And it says the following, you shall not make for yourself, I, well, this, I, okay, I'll, I'll make this comment first, that I didn't start right at the Torah portion, because the Torah portion starts at verse 3. I decided to begin at verse 1, which is from last week's portion. And so I thought it would draw in a little bit of context here. But it says that uh, you shall not make for yourself idols, you shall not set up for yourself an image or a sacred pillar, nor shall you place a figure, a figured stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary, I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments so as to carry them out, then I shall give you rains in their season, so that the land will yield its produce and the trees of the field will bear their fruit. Indeed, their threshing will last for you until grape gathering, and grape gathering will last until sowing time. You will thus eat your food to the full and live securely in your land. Okay, and that was Leviticus 26, verses 1 through uh, 5. And, um, yeah, you're right. There, uh, there are a lot of people suffering today. Um, I just wanted to see Howard. Okay. No, Judy. Judy. Howard's last name. Okay, Judy. Sorry. Okay, yeah, Judy says that there seems to be so many suffering from anxiety today. And, and you know what? Yeah, I agree. And um, there's a lot of illness, sickness, cancer disease you know it too and and um, I have an opinion on that that's not too popular <laughs> but um, I believe that it's connected to obeying God's word in the Torah and the rejection thereof but um, anyway so we, we we just read through Leviticus 26 verse 1 through 5 oh okay Judy okay I know who you are okay and this week's reading, it's interesting because the opening verse of the Torah portion begins with the statement, if you walk in my statutes and keep my commands so as to carry them out. And this is interesting because we are told who owns the statutes and the commands. And it says um, the statutes, Behukoti, and the commandments, Mitzvotai, is the Lord's and not man's. That these statutes and commandments belong to the Lord. And you notice that uh, the way they're written in the Hebrew is that they're um, personal singular. And so God is saying that these are my commandments and these are my statutes. And in Leviticus chapter 26 verse 3, and this implies that the statutes and commandments in the Torah are given by God to his people and to those who trust and believe in him. And I believe that this is a very important concept because I hear a lot that, oh, you're just trying to be Jewish, or why do you want to be Jewish, you know, and, and, and obeying the commandments. And the point is, is that these commandments weren't just given to the Jewish people. I mean, they, they, they were given to a mixed multitude. And when we read verses like Leviticus 26, verse 3, that God says, these are my commandments and my statutes, that he's giving his Torah to all people and to those who would um, seek him. And um, 
Ellie says that in my home, my commandments rules were only for my children, but all who came into my house had to obey them. Yeah, you know, that's a good point, Ellie. That is a, that's an excellent analogy. I like that. And so, this idea that the commandments and statutes belong to God is born out of the uh, natural progression of the Torah's narrative in the sense that God delivered a mixed multitude and brought a mixed multitude of people before the mountain of Sinai and he gave them his Torah to live by. Now studying the concept of the mixed multitude or that, um, that phrase, the mixed multitude whom God delivered from Egypt provides us with a foreshadow of what our Father in Heaven had planned from the beginning that both Jew and non-Jew are grafted into one family as we read in Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. The scriptures state that God sanctifies both the Jew and the non-Jew in the same way. He saves us in the Messiah Yeshua by faith in the same way. And the Lord wants us to live and walk before Him in the same way in the way that brings glory to his name, and that is according to his word. Now the rabbis in Midrash Tehillim Vayikra, in Parashat 35, part 1, they point out this fact and the importance of these words in the Torah, and they say the following. And I'm on page 2. I quote from the Midrash Rabbah Vayikra, Parashat 35, part 1, and it says that, and just a portion of that, because I think it's pretty long, but I, it says that, if you walk in my statutes, and they're referring to Levit Leviticus 26, verse 3, this bears on the text, I consider my ways and turn my feet unto your testimonies. And they, they refer to Psalm 119. And David says, so David said, Sovereign of the universe, every day I used to plan and decide that I would go to a particular dwelling house, house, but my feet always brought me to synagogues and houses of study. Hence it is written, and turned my feet unto your testimonies. And so the Midrash references Leviticus 26 verse 3 and comments on if you walk on my statutes and then draws a parallel to David's words in Psalm 119. And I quote from Psalm 119 verse 57 to 66 on page 2 and 3. And that says the following, The Lord is my portion. I have promised to keep your words. I sought your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your word. I considered my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies. I hastened and did not delay to keep your commandments. The cords of the wicked had have encircled me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight, at midnight I shall rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous ordinances. I am a companion of all those who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. The earth is full of your loving kindness, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good discernment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Okay, and that was Psalm 119, verse 57 to 66. Now, according to the psalm, this psalm, David considered his ways and turned his feet unto the testimonies of God. And so the first question I have is what does it mean to turn one's feet to the testimonies of God? What are God's testimony and what is a testimony? Anyone have any thoughts on that? Now, what is a testimony? What's the testimony of God? Halacha. Yeah, that's a good one, Ellie. Yeah, the walk. You walk you're, if you're going to talk to talk, you better walk to walk, right? And so, uh, we all know Torah, right? Right, And uh, that's another testimony of God. Now, we all know what it means to give our testimony. And that means to speak of how God has worked in our lives, how one got saved. You know, generally you say, well, give me your testimony. That's how, you, how, you, how one got saved. And how they came, faith, came to faith in Yeshua the Messiah. You know, etc. But, what does it mean... To turn, let's see, to turn our feet to a testimony, the testimony of God. And Ellie says that walk your testimony, walk your testimony doesn't just speak it, yeah, or don't just speak it, right, right. That's living it. 
And according to the Englishman's Dictionary, the word te testimony is, an act, is the act of giving evidence in judicial proceedings in a court of law. And in the biblical context, the testimonies of God, the scriptures bear witness or evidence of what the Lord has done for his people. And you know what? You read in Revelation, was it chapter 20? That books will be opened and we will be judged. And uh, the, you know, the question is that are our lives written down? To be inspected later on you know that's a good question right and in the biblical context the testimonies of God the scriptures bear witness or evidence of what the Lord has done for his people and thus the turning of one's feet to the testimonies of God is a process of becoming a living testimony of God working in one's life and a few biblical examples on the use of the word testimony and uh, one is the Lord instruct Moshe to construct the Ark of the Testimony, which, is, which was God's provision of a structure for worship and drawing near to him. Number two, according to the scriptures, it's possible to lie or bear false testimony. So it's, it's possible to spin this for evil, spin a testimony for evil. And so even within a testimony, you have the, you have the choice to do what is, what is righteous or what is unrighteous, and to make a choice between good and evil. In number three, we read of the testimonies of Abraham's faith in the stories of the Torah, which bear witness of his life of faith. His actions in faith are recorded, and we read them in the Torah. Number four, we have a powerful testimony in Yeshua the Messiah, where our testimony itself is prophetic in nature. And in Revelation 19, verse 10, it says that then I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's interesting. Yeah. Number five, the apostle John speaks of God giving his testimony concerning his son. And it says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 9, If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For the testimony of God is this, that he has testified concerning his Son. And so, I only gave five examples there, but you probably come up with more. But when the rabbis speak of turning one's feet toward the testimonies of God, they are speaking of drawing near and obeying God's word. For example, are we walking in the way the Lord wants us to walk for the purpose of bearing the testimony of God or Yeshua the Messiah? Are we taking the time in our lives to ponder the path of our feet? Do our daily and weekly routines show a purpose which is centered in Yeshua the Messiah? You know, all these are really good questions, you know, and um, I think that, that it's it's important to ask those questions, you know, especially in light of the, the Torah portion. In in the apostolic scriptures, Paul tells the Corinthians in Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse five, that test yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, or do you not recognize this about yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test? And the prophets tell us in Haggai now therefore, Haggai um, 1, 5, verse 5, it says, Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So even God is telling us to consider our ways. And David says, to commune with our heart in Psalm 4, verse 4, four to see whether our ways are righteous before him, before the Lord. And many today, however, are too busy with life to stop and think soberly about their lives. Entertainment is the preferred activity which, if we think about it, is designed to cease all thinking. You know, we, uh, we watch entertainment so we don't have to think, you know. And I don't know, that, that's my opinion, you know. And instead of having quiet time to reflect on one's life, radio, television, cell phones, mobile devices all take up the spare time. And so the scriptures speak, they also speak of... Um, God is not of the wicked that God is not in all his thoughts in Psalms chapter 10 verse 4. And so then the question is did are we are you categorized in one way or another in that way? 
when you think about it, as much time as one spends on radio, TV, cell phones, and mobile devices, are God is God in your thoughts during those times? And if it's not at all whatsoever, and I I'm, I know I don't I don't believe any of you guys here. Are, um, it's a rhetorical question, but I don't believe anyone here in the room is is like that. But um, for those who may be reading or listening, that these are this is a very important question, and that is our day taking up so significantly by the, the little things of life that we don't have time for the Lord, you know, to to pray or to uh, read at least a little bit of His Word and to spend time fellowshipping with Him. And King David said to his son Solomon the following in in First Kings chapter two verses one through four, he says. As David's time, the scriptures say, as David's time to draw near, or, sorry, let me start over. As David's time to die drew near, he charged Solomon the son, saying, I am going the way of all the earth. Be strong there and keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, and his testimonies, according to what is written in the Torah of Moshe that you may succeed in all that you do and wherever you turn, so that the Lord may carry out his promise which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons are careful of their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Okay, so that was 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 1-4. through 4. So David says, Be a man and keep the charge of the Lord to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies that are written in the Torah of Moshe. And the reason is so that he will succeed in all he does. And the interesting thing is that when we look at the the scripture, the text that uh, David is speaking, we look at the pronomial suffixes, they all indicate that what who the how should I say who the owner of these things are? It says that these ways, these statutes, these commandments, these judgments, these testimonies all belong to the Lord. We hear a lot today regarding being a disciple, a Talmud of Yeshua. And in order to do this, we need to be students of God's word and then go and do likewise. And it's important to note that are, there is more to a Tal- Talmud than simply being a student. A student today wants to know what a teacher knows for the grade, to complete the class or the degree, or even to do so out of respect for the teacher. A Talmud, on the other hand, wants to be like the teacher and even to become what the teacher is. Therefore, within the biblical context, a student was passionately devoted to his rabbi and noted everything he did or said. He walked in the way he did in every aspect. And so the rabbi Talmud relationship was a very intense and personal system of education. And note how this is the relationship that we are called to have in Yeshua the Messiah. And we are told to abide in Christ in John chapter 15. Now this rabbi Talmud relationship was very intense and the rabbis of the first century were looking for the smartest and the brightest of students. And as a result, when a student went to a rabbi and asked him to be his Talmud, his disciple, the rabbi would test him and ask him a series of questions to test his knowledge and understanding of the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. In addition to the uh, Mishnah and the Talmud, in the first century it would have been the, um, the oral law and the, um, the traditions of the, the rabbis. And... Note something here that Yeshua asks his disciples in Matthew 15, verse 16. He asks, are you still so dull? And having been with Yeshua for a period of time, he expected them to have understanding of the parables that he taught. And they were walking in his ways and discussing the parable, which the parable is a colloquial teaching technique of the rabbis of their day. And with this background information, we can imagine what it would have been like for a person who was not exceptional to have been invited by a rabbi to follow him. 
And if you come next week to the psalm study, we go into more detail on this, what I mean. You know, so I'm not going to um, give any more information. That's you know, for next week. But on, on the psalm study part two. But um, we can only imagine how awesome it would have been for a person who was not exceptional, like his disciples, to have been invited by Yeshua to follow him. And when Yeshua went to his disciples, he said to them, follow me. And they immediately got up and left all that they had and followed him. And this was an act of great honor to follow from after a brilliant rabbi. And they were given the opportunity to study at the feet of Yeshua and Messiah, the feet of a rabbi. And, you know, it always gets me is that when he went up to these people, they didn't know who he was. And... Uh, he just said, follow me, and they got out and followed him. Why do you think they did that? I mean, was there something about his appearance that uh, made them believe that he was a a, uh, a rabbi? And when studying the scriptures, I found that, um, and we'll continue in a moment. This is a sidetrack here. But uh, when studying the scriptures, I, um, I believe that Yeshua was a Pharisee. And he was of the sect of the Pharisees. And there are various scripture references like um, Mark chapter 5, verse 30. And, and it depends on the translation you use, whether NASB, NIV, KJV, King James Version, or Young's Literal Translation, or um, the ESV. If you look at all of those, you'll see that when he was invited to the house of the Pharisee, he was of the same sect. And in other instances um, that... We read that Yeshua came with the Pharisees when he met John the Baptist. And John even said to the Pharisees that there is one among you that you do not even know, whose, whose feet I am unworthy to untie, whose sandals, you know. And so um, I they believe that there are many examples in the Torah, or in the apostolic writings, that um, show us that Yeshua was a Pharisee. He, was a, um, he followed that, that, um, that way, but he also taught truth. And um, you've heard that before, Cheryl. Okay, and so and that that's um, and so when he went to his disciples, they recognized him as being a Pharisee, and they they, followed, they immediately dropped everything to follow him and to study under him. So, um, generally speaking, to follow in the footsteps of the Messiah, having studied the Torah's statutes and commandments, like we find here in the Parsha, it quickly becomes apparent that in the commandments, we take on the character of God to be loving, merciful, kind, long-suffering, forgiving towards others, and therefore directing our ways to the testimony of God, the testimonies of God, implies doing and observing, which testifies of having the purpose of mind that is centered upon the Lord and Yeshua the Messiah. And so turning one's feet toward the testimonies of God involves acting wisely to live in the manner in which the Lord has instructed us. The commandments, in one aspect or another, reveal an essential element of God's character. The commandments are the very will and wisdom of God. And it's interesting to note that Yeshua said in Luke 22, verse 42, he said that, Not my will, but yours be done. He also said in John 8, 28, I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. And also in John 15, verse 10, I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. And these verses are important or significant because by turning our feet to the testimonies of God, the commandments are in one way or another teach us about Christ's behavior. And there is a direct relationship between the commandments and the person of the Messiah. And because of the commandments are a direct revelation from God, then they speak of living a godly life. And it's interesting that Yeshua says to Philip in John chapter 14, verse 9, he says, He who has seen me has seen the Father. And therefore, to see a commandment performed, because that's what Yeshua was doing, we are seeing something of God. And when Christ came to us, he came as the Holy One of God, as we read in John chapter 6, verse 69, and Mark chapter 1, verse 24. And His holiness is characterized by the way He walked and who He was and is. And so therefore, we should not be afraid of the commandments, but we should, be, we should embrace them in Yeshua Messiah, the Messiah, 
for the glory of our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. And so um, that concludes the Torah portion for today. And so I'll release the mic. Anyone have any uh, comments on, on this stuff?